with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, jambo, bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jadley and this is the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted and so honored that you're joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Amazon Music, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Michelle Schaub. She is here to celebrate a beautiful picture book called Kindness is a Kite String. Before we invite Michelle into the studio, I wanted to let you know one of the reasons we, we really encourage you to subscribe to the show, wherever you find your podcast. It, it, we don't want you to miss an episode. We have so many fantastic guests coming on the show, and we don't want you to take a chance uh, of missing something fantastic. For example, in the next week or so, we, we have some really great guests. Sherry Park will be here. You may have heard me announce that her middle grade novel, Heaven's Bell, is one of our latest Reading With Your Kids certified great reads. It's a wonderful book, a really thought-provoking book, and she'll be here to talk all about it. Prudence William Shipman. She is the wife of Terrence Shipman, and she is the latest member, latest writing member of Team Shipman. She'll be here to celebrate her debut book. And our friend Yobi Q will be back on the show to celebrate Asian American Awareness Month and to also tell us all about her wonderful book, Asian Adventures A to Z. Now, you can subscribe to the uh, to, to the, the Reading With Your Kids podcast wherever you find your podcast. Some of our favorite places, of course, the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, Google Podcasts. If you're in India, you can subscribe on Ghana. If you're in Asia, you can subscribe on Himalaya, Podchaser, Podbean, Podcast Addict. Name just about any podcast app, and you'll find us there. The Reading With Your Kids podcast. Joining us right now from Chicago in the great state of Illinois, we are celebrating her beautiful picture book called Kindness is a Kite String. Please welcome to the show, Michelle Schaub. Michelle, how are you? I'm doing fabulous today. I'm really, really happy to have you here. I was telling Michelle that the the book uh, I, I received the book and it's actually sitting in my bedroom and it's an absolutely beautiful book. It really is. I'm so pleased with the way it turned out. The illustrator Claire Laforte did an amazing job with the illustrations, and Cardinal Rule Press is just wonderful with the books they put out. I'm so pleased with it. Yeah. So tell us uh, about the book. So kindness is a kite string is a positive story for kids. It's all about the pay it forward power of kindness. And I use a series of similes and metaphors to connect kindness to things that kids will find familiar. And it starts with one child's kind deed. He gives his mom a hug in the morning. And then this ripples forward and connects diverse members throughout the community. Interesting. Interesting. So this would be a great now a great way not only to teach kids uh, about kindness and the power of kindness um, and, and how they can affect other people's lives, but it sounds like it would be a great way to also teach kids about similes and metaphors. Absolutely, and I am a language arts teacher by trade, and so with all of my books, I'm very conscious about that educational hook. How can teachers use these books? in the classroom? How can parents use these books with that extra layer? And so all of my books have back matter, have an author's note. And Kindness in as, as a Kite String in particular has an author's note that talks more about similes and metaphors, talks about how kindness is connected to similes and metaphors. Because with a simile or a metaphor, what you're doing is you're taking something unfamiliar usually an abstract con- concept like kindness, and you're connecting it to something familiar, like a kite string. And really with empathy, 
and kindness, you're doing something similar where you have to step out of your familiar zone, what you know, yourself and your world, and you have to put yourself in the shoes of someone different than you to be able to understand what they're going through so that you can be kind and be empathetic. So there's a huge connection there. Yeah, yeah. That's... Uh... That's really important, that whole idea of, of helping kids understand how important it is to kind of change their perspective, to understand that we do all have our perspectives. We, you know, we, we have experiences and lessons and education that kind of shape the way we look at things, and, and, and that's important to have and to understand. But sometimes we need to put that on the back burner and take a look at life through somebody else's perspective. Absolutely. And one of the things that I love about kindness is a kite string is there's so much diversity in the book. And so kids from all different backgrounds, when they open this book, they're going to see themselves, but they're also going to see people who are different from them. And so the underlying message is that you can reach out and you can understand and you can be empathetic to people who are different than you, and that's what brings us together. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny. Michelle asked me before we started recording if I had sent her any questions that she might have missed, and I, of course, I don't, because that would mean I'd have to sit down and think about them. And I'm, I'm much more of a wing it kind of a guy, for better or worse. But I, I, one of the things that I love about that kind of winging it is that it gives me a chance to kind of just let my mind wander in. I know that it's hard sometimes for kids to learn how to be kind. And so it's important for us to help them uh, understand that, help them give to others. But one of the things that, that I, it just occurred to me is that there are a lot of kids and there's a lot of adults who have a hard time allowing people to be kind to them, allowing people, uh, uh, accepting the kindness from others. Can you, I, I know I didn't prepare you for this, but can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, absolutely. It's a two-way street. And that whole idea of the give and take is what's part of this book because it literally is a chain reaction in the story. Someone receives a kindness and then they turn around and they give a kindness. And the very end of the book, the words are kindness is contagious. When you catch it, pass it on. So the idea there is that you're going to absorb this kindness. You're going to take it in, and then that's going to inspire you to turn around and be kind to someone else. So I think you you do. You have to be able to accept kindnesses from other people yeah. also. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, 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 we've talked a lot here on the show about about the fact that it's really hard for some folks to allow themselves to be vulnerable. And and I think that, that this is one of those cases that, that – you know, to accept kindness from somebody else, you kind of have to admit that I am not perfect and I need some help sometime and, and, and be vulnerable. And that can be very, very challenging, especially for a lot of, a lot of kids. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. So where did the inspiration for this book come from? You know, believe it or not, it came from an insurance commercial. So, yeah, I was, I was watching television one day and there, and I, I'm very, um, I'm poignant commercials just get me. Uh -huh. I, I, I tear up at commercials. And so this commercial was set in a city neighborhood and it started with one lady stopping a man from crossing a street in front of a car. And then that man helps a mom get her stroller off the bus. And then that mom helps someone else. And it's a really short commercial, but it just, you see that kindness ripple through this community. And then it circles back to that first lady. And it just sends shivers up my spine. Like, wow, this, it's amazing how one little tiny deed, you don't know, you're just doing one little action. And then that moves forward and moves forward, like ripples in a pond. And you've all of a sudden affected a hundred people and you don't even realize it. Um, so I just, I just loved that idea. And I really wanted to show that in a children's book. Yeah. I, I, I love that idea too. It's, it, I think it's empowering for kids, uh, helping them understand that uh, you, you really are changing the, your community. You're changing the world with a simple act of kindness. It, it can affect so many different lives. 
Absolutely. And I think that I, that word empowering is a really important word for this book, because especially this year, the world has been really unpredictable. And kids are seeing so many things that may make them feel like they don't have power. They can't control things. But kindness is something that they can control. It's right there in their pocket, and they can share it, and they can make a difference. So mm-hmm. it's really empowering. Yeah. I'm I'm curious what kind of response have folks shared with you after after reading the book? Well, the book just came out April 1st, so it's brand new. I just did my launch last week, so it's just getting into kids hands, but I have had a lot of positive response from teachers who and because they're there's a reader's guide that goes along with the book. The beginning of the book has Uh, prompts, discussion prompts. So before reading, while reading, and after reading prompts, which make it really great for adults who want to interact with the book, but maybe they're tired, you know, it's bedtime and, oh my gosh, I can't think. And here are these questions right there for them. Um, So it really, there are so many resources that go with the book that make it easy to spark these conversations about kindness. And I think people have really appreciated that. Yeah. You know, we've we've talked here on the podcast so many times about parents being their kids first and most important teacher. And I I think that's true in math and science. And but it's especially true when it comes to values like kindness, because, you know, our kids can read read books like kindness is a kite string. But if they're home and they're seeing us you know, cutting people off in traffic and flipping the bird and cursing people and maybe not being honest and jumping the line, well, they're going to sit down and say, well, why do I need to be kind? It doesn't seem to be working for my parents. Yeah. Well, hopefully that this this book will be empowering for children, but not just children, for the adults who are reading it to children. I mean, that message is for everyone Mm -hmm. reading. Yeah. Has this idea of kindness, I know it was the, the book was inspired by this uh, commercial that you saw, but there must be something inside of you that that, that commercial touched is being kind and sharing with others something that's always been uh, important in your life? Absolutely it has. Um, but I even think beyond that, what, what's really important to me is that idea of that little drop can make a difference. And I think this goes back to when I was really young. My grandmother told me this fable of a mouse and a coal dove. I think I have the animals correct, but um, the mouse was watching snow fall on a branch, just one flake at a time, drop, drop, drop. And she asked the dove, well, how much does a snowflake weigh? And the dove said, oh, nothing next to nothing. And so the snowflakes are dropping, snowflakes are dropping, snowflakes are dropping. And then after a couple of hours, the entire branch fell down. And so the mouse said, well, that was nothing next to nothing, but it made a huge impact. And so just that idea of those little drops, they can make a difference. And so I just try to live my life that way because otherwise you, you can be overwhelmed. You know, mm-hmm. t- kids are overwhelmed. Parents can be overwhelmed. Teachers can be overwhelmed. There's so much negativity you can see on the news and in the world, um, and you can feel powerless, but this is just how I face that, that I, I'm going to do something, something kind every day, something to help the earth every day. And those little snowflakes, those little drops, if we're all doing it, is they're, they're going to make a difference. Well, what a, uh, a great lesson. I mean, here it is. This is, this is a story, a fable that your grandmother sh- shared with you many years ago, and it's made such an incredible impression on you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the power of stories. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, as a language arts teacher, I, I just want to ask uh, about the power of, of words. And, uh, you know, I've heard I, I th- th- there was a uh, multi-bazillion book-selling author one time of, of, of novels. He kind of... Uh, on a podcast, kind of bemoan the, the, the fact that, you know, there are these authors who are writing children's books. And who writes these children's books? They're like, you know, just 600 words. I, I mean, anybody can do that. And it's like, I, I strongly disagree because in, 
and it's shown in this book, you only have 600 words or so to tell a story. And in a commercial, you only have 30 seconds or maybe a minute to get across a story. And sometimes that's really, those stories are most powerful. Those those stories that are told, like like the fable that your grandmother told you many years ago, they're short. Every word counts. Can you, can you just kind of expand on that? Oh, for sure. I mean, words are my jam. And I'm a poet at heart. And my first two uh, picture books that were published are poetry collections. And so I'm working not even with 600 words. Sometimes I'm working with 30 words to make an impact. So every word absolutely counts. And I love this quote by Mark Twain. I had this hanging in my classroom, but it said, the difference between the almost right word and the right word is the difference between the lightning bug and the lightning. So you really, as a children's writer, I mean, any writer, really, you want to find the exact perfect word for the situation. And in order to do that, you really need to be drenched in words. You need to, to know a lot of words or you need to have the resources, like I use my thesaurus all the time, to find the right word because it is really important. Those nuances between words make a huge difference. And that's one of the big things I, I worked with when I taught in seventh and eighth grade we were big word collectors and we talked a lot about the power of words and finding the right word. Do you, have you noticed that, that folks don't have as extensive a vocabulary now compared to earlier? It's hard for me to say because my folks are kids, Mm -hmm. (laughs) middle school kids. And so I'm working with them when their vocabularies are emerging. And that's one of my passions and my priorities is to give them those words. And so I'm hoping that as a result of my work and the work of other teachers, that those students do have those words or know, at least if they don't have those words in their brains, they have what I call word consciousness, where they realize I need a word here. I need to find that word. I need to find the right word and go and, and get the, the help to find the perfect word for that situation. So as far as adults, I, I don't know. It's hard for me to speak to that. Yeah. You know, I'm, 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 I was thinking back. I've toured Puerto Rico with my educational magic show. And, and the first time I went down, I just had a professional translator take take the script and, and translate it. And I'm, I'm not fluent in Spanish by any means. And, and I got this back and it was so difficult. There, there's so many words that were new to me and the tour just, I had cue cards all over the stage and I was just kind of reading from them and it wasn't, it was less than perfect. And I came back home and I decided, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do it differently, but I'm going to translate it using my 300 words that I that I know in Spanish and I, I was sharing this with um with a teacher a high school teacher and I was kind of complaining I, I feel bad I only have these 300 words and and his his comment was well you know most people only use about three or four hundred words in their daily life and I thought wow that's kind yeah. of sad because there's thousands of beautiful words out there that we're missing Right. Yeah, that's very true. I have heard that too. Yeah. Hey, so hopefully read more picture books, read more books. That's how you expand your vocabulary, right? Yes, absolutely. Through reading. And you know, you were say, saying that you're teaching seventh and eighth graders. Um, that's a beautiful time f- for us to remember to continue to read with those kids or listen to audiobooks with those kids because you know, uh, a student that's that's reading at a seventh grade level, they can they can understand uh, and comprehend a book that is written for a you know a, a, a high school kid or even an early college kid. And so, when we're reading those books with our kids, they're going to be absorbing words that they wouldn't normally be hearing in the, the middle grade novels that they were that they might be assigned at school. Absolutely. I'm a big believer in, you know, there's something in Illinois called Lexile levels where this, you take the test and this is your reading level and then you're supposed to read books in that level. But I believe that, you know, there's a whole range of books and just as kids can be reaching beyond, if it's a subject that they're passionate about, passionate about, they can be reading 
beyond that into a higher level. But I also really feel strongly that picture books, they have such universal messages. And I think there's a place for picture books in middle school classrooms and high school classrooms, you know, as the spark for um, a unit of study, as a thematic look at something, picture books have a lot of power, even for visual literacy, just to be looking at the, the illustrations in a picture book and mm-hmm. how they relate to the words. There's so many ways they can be used. Absolutely. Hey, I, I'm, I'm curious. This is this might seem like a silly question, but as somebody who loves words and loves vocabulary, do you have a favorite word? I do. <laughs> in fact, every year with my students, we, we talk about our favorite words. And if I have any students out there listening, they probably know this, but discombobulate is my favorite word. Discombobulate. Is, I love the word discombobulate mm-hmm. because often as a teacher and a mom and a writer, I feel discombobulated because I have so many things going on, but I also love the sound of that word. And as a poet, I'm very tuned in not only to the meaning of words, but the sounds of words. And discombobulate just kind of bounces around in your mouth like you've got a ping pong ball in there, which is kind of how you feel when you're discombobulated. So, yeah. I, 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 I've definitely have felt discombobulated at different points in my life. I don't know if I've ever felt combobulated. Is that a word? <laughs> I don't think I don't think combobulated is actually a word, but um, it would be a good one. <laughs> Are there any? Um, Games, other than just reading, um, not to say just reading, but other than reading with our kids, are there other games or techniques that, that parents can uh, engage in with their kids that can help them expand their vocabulary and be introduced to words that they wouldn't uh, normally be hearing in the TV or the music that they're listening to? Well, I one of the things that I do with my own students and I did with my own kids is I encourage them to be word collectors. And I think parents can do that with their kids, too. Just have a word list at home. And when you are listening to the TV, watching Netflix, reading a book, when you come across a word that you don't know, write it down. Instead of just kind of skimming over it to get on with the story, write it down because that's how it sticks in your brain. Mm-hmm. And then you can start collecting words and you start noticing them more and um, paying attention to yeah. words out there. So I think that that's a big thing to just be word collectors. Yeah. Well, I love the idea of helping our kids, you know, be more aware of the wor- words and, and be collectors of words. I also love the idea of helping our kids being aware of all the moments in life that they can choose to be kind and uh, really change the world. Uh, Michelle, where can folks go to learn more about kindness is a kite string and learn more about you? Well, you can go to my website, michelleshab.com, learn about all of my books there. You can go to Cardinal Rule Press's website, cardinalrulepress.com, to learn about my book. And they have so many other delightful books for socially conscious kids. I also have a blog called Poetry Boost, where I share lessons and writing prompts and mentor texts for parents and kids to engage engage and educators also to engage with poetry in the classroom and beyond. Oh, I and love it. That was, that's called poetry boost and that's at poetryboost.com. Awesome. Well, we've had a great time. We've been talking about kindness, about being discombobulated, about similes and metaphors and poetry. And this has been so much fun. Uh, we've been speaking with the author of Kindness is a Kite String, brand new book from Cardinal Rural Press, written by our guest, Michelle Schaub. Michelle, thanks so much for being on the Reading With Your Kids podcast. And thank you for all you do to connect books with kids and parents. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. It's another double header Saturday. Two fantastic guests for you to meet. Christine Villa will be here celebrating Zubaloo. And we also have illustrator Rosie Pova. That's the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. If you are the author of a fantastic children's book, we would love to have you as a guest. Being a guest on the Reading With Your Kids podcast, it's fun. It's easy. It gives you the chance to tell thousands of people about your fantastic children's book and... It doesn't cost a thing. That's right. No need to pay anybody to facilitate your visit. 
All you need to do is you go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, click on the author, click here button at the top of the page, scroll on down to where it says be a guest. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, I want to thank our guest, Michelle Schaub. Be sure to check out Kindness is a Kite String. I also want to thank my team, Alejandro Doherty, Fatima Khan, Alexia Brown. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking through the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. <laughs>